welcome guys. Today we're going to be painting, getting a little practice with the basics of mixing paints and working with paint. Um, today's painting is going to be a sunset, and in the sunset we're going to be creating atmospheric perspective. This is the um, perspective you see when you're looking out across a distance, and you notice that, for example, in these photos, the mountains in the foreground look much darker. The mountains in the distance get lighter and hazier in color. So we're going to be taking and using this as a good example to practice mixing different shades and tints with our mountains. Today you're going to need a paintbrush, a cup of water, some paper towels, a piece of paper, as well as some paint. We're only going to be using the primary colors as well as black and white. So if you have red, yellow, blue, and black and white, that's everything you need to get started. First, let's talk about some important tips for painting. On the right, you can see a picture of what we're going to be working on today, our mountain landscape and sunset. These are some important tips that I would like for you to write in your sketchbook. Number one, always add dark paint to the light paint when you're mixing. Never the other way around. And what I mean by that is, let's say for example, you're going to make green. To make green, you need blue and yellow. So blue is a much darker color than yellow. So when we're mixing these two, we're going to take the, a little bit of blue and add it to the yellow, adding the darker color to the lighter color. And you'll find that it only takes a small amount of that darker color to dramatically change the light color. However, if you switch it the other way around, you're going to find that it takes a whole lot of yellow to change that blue. So in order to save paint and not have to work as hard, Always add the dark color to the light color. Number two, a little goes a long way. So again, this kind of relates to conserve, conserving your paint and not wasting materials. You'd be surprised how far a little bit of paint can go. You could always get out more paint if you need to, but if you get out too much, you can't really put it back. So just get out little bits at a time um, and see how far you can make that go. Number three, clean your brush when you're blending. Um, you'll see this in practice in a little bit, um, but it helps if you're trying to get a nice, clean, smooth blend to clean your brush. And you'll notice while I'm painting that I'm always holding a paper towel and I'm constantly rinsing off and cleaning my brush so I don't have a big globby mess. Number four, load your brush with just enough. Not too little, not too much. This is a common problem I see with beginning painters where they're kind of frustrated, their painting is coming out messy, and it's usually one of these two problems. Either they've loaded their brush with way too much paint and it's just becoming a big globby mess, or they have too little paint and they're trying to make it stretch across the paper further than it can, and they end up kind of scrubbing their brush back and forth, and again, both results in sort of frustration and messy painting. So load your brush with just enough, not too little, not too much. Number five, take care of your brushes and they'll take care of you. So this relates to not leaving paint um, caked in your brushes, rinsing them off, and at the end of your painting session, it only takes a couple of seconds. Just take your brush over to the sink, uh, put a little soap in your hand, uh, run the brushes in your hand and scrub them a little bit, hold them under the water, and try to put the bristles back in shape. It doesn't take long, but it makes a world of difference when you come back to paint another picture and your brushes are in good shape. So let's make sure you've written down some notes about that first part and let's get started. So here you see our example painting. We're going to need two paint brushes, one that's a little bigger and one that's a little smaller. We have black, white, blue, red, and yellow paint. Primary colors in black and white. We can just put those to the side so they're handy to reach in a little bit. We're going to need something to paint, uh, mix our paints on, so a paper plate, some paper towels, and a cup of water. If you can get all those materials together, you are ready to go. So first off, um, let's, we're going to be starting with the background of our painting. and So we're going to need just red and yellow paint. And I'm going to go ahead and start by using just a pencil and let's draw four mountains. One, two, three, four mountains. Leave a little room at the top for a sky. Not going to draw the trees right now. 
I'm going to take the larger of my two paintbrushes <clears throat> and I'm going to mix the red and yellow. Now remember, we want to add the red to the yellow, not the other way around. The darker color gets added to the lighter color. So I'm going to scoop a little bit of this yellow out into the middle, right? And then I'm going to take just a little bit of red, right? It doesn't take a whole bunch and I'm just going to mix that into that little section of yellow. And already, pretty quickly, I've got a nice looking orange. Right, now if I decide that it's too light, I can add a little bit more red. If it's too dark, I can add more yellow. Um, but mostly it's a large chunk of yellow and just a little bit of red. To get us a nice medium looking orange. All right, now we're gonna have to work quickly in order to create this sunset, right? Because we wanna have it gradually go from red to orange to yellow. And in order to do that, the paint has gotta be wet while we're painting. Right, so we won't be able to work slowly. I'm going to start with the darkest color and nice long back and forth smooth brush strokes. I'm going to layer in that red. Right, rinse my brush off real quick. Wipe it off because I'm blending. I'll take a big chunk of orange and the important thing here is that I, I want to make sure to overlap. So I'm putting that orange over the top of the red and just back and forth long back and forth smooth brush strokes. Wipe my brush off again, get a big scoop of yellow, right, and start layering the yellow at the bottom, making sure that I'm overlapping. Now, if this is your first time attempting to do a blend like this, your first layer of paint may look kind of striped and not so great. In which case, I encourage you to do a second coat of paint, and on the second coat, try to get it more blended, right? So if your first attempt at this, you have more kind of a striped rainbow looking sky, um, do the same exact steps again, but focus more on the blending, right? So we're gonna start with the mountains next, and for that, we're gonna need some blue and some black. So I've already got some blue and black in my plate here. Now, of course, I'm gonna add the darker color to the lighter color. So I'm gonna put a little blue off to the side, and I'm gonna get just the tiniest amount of black. Right, and I want to make sort of a navy blue. We're going to paint the bottom mountain here, the one that's closest to us. So to create atmospheric perspective, the mountain closest to us will be the darkest. Right, and again, I'm, I'm trying to get practice today, focusing on creating nice, smooth paint strokes, really trying to control my painting, slowly dragging the paintbrush on the edge. I'm taking my time with our navy blue color. And you may have to go over this a couple of times to get it nice and smooth. All right, go ahead and rinse out your brush. On the next mountain, we're actually only gonna just use blue. So we're, we're not gonna mix it with any other colors. It's just pure blue. Plain old blue. And focus on making nice, long, back and forth, smooth brush strokes. Don't scrub it. Don't load your brush with too little or too much. Focus on practice with um, creating clean edges. Right, and for a nice clean edge, I sort of slow down a little bit, make sure I have enough paint in my brush, and just do a long brush stroke along the edge. All right, we're ready for the third mountain. So for this one, we're gonna do blue and white. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and mix the colors for the next two mountains. So the next two mountains are tints, T-I-N-T, -T, of blue, right? Our first mountain was a shade of blue. So for our two tints of blue, I'm gonna take and make um, a blue that has a lot of white in it and a blue that just has a little bit of white. using blue and white for both of these, but just different amounts of each color. All right, so there's one blue. Over to the side, I'm gonna do the same thing, adding blue and white together, but um, I wanna have one of these blues be a little lighter and one of them be a little darker. All 
Alright, so the darker of these two tints, I'm going to add into our third mountain. done. Let's go ahead and add our lightest blue color to our very last mountain. And at this point, you want to make a nice smooth type top edge. So you may paint over the top of that yellow a little bit just to get a nice clean edge. Just drag your brush slowly across that top edge. Nice smooth brush strokes. You shouldn't have to scrub your brush real hard on your paper if you're loading it with enough paint. Now the type of paint we're using today, for most of you are using, is temper paint. Um, and as it dries, it gets a little bit lighter and it'll look kind of patchy at first, but it should smooth out. All right, so the last thing we're gonna add to it is our, our trees at the bottom. So before I paint the tree, I'm gonna take a second here to draw it in pencil, just to sort of explain how I'm doing it. So the first thing is paint the center of the tree. All right, and at the very top, I'm gonna to add like just some very tiny little twiggy branches, All right? And what I'm going for is a tree that is at least somewhat asymmetrical. I don't want it to be too perfectly symmetrical. So now I'm just gonna start creating layers to my trees. I kind of think of these as like little mustaches, right? Each mustache that I add um, is a little bit bigger than the last one. And occasionally I wanna sort of add a little extra branch here and there to make it more asymmetrical, right? So in a second, I'm gonna do the same exact effect with my paintbrush, and I'm gonna just use black paint for this. Right, the things that are closest to us are the darkest. So in this case, our trees are like on a hilltop really close to us. So they're going to go all the way to the very bottom of the paper and they're going to run off the edge. We don't actually see the ground that the trees are sitting on. So you'll notice that I'm using my smallest paintbrush here. Right, I'm getting a little bit of just black paint. And here we're getting practice with controlling our paint and making as thin of a line as we possibly can. Right, so just a smooth, thin line, especially the very top of the line. I want it to be very, very thin. So this is good practice for controlling your paint. Now the very tippy top here, I'm gonna do just a couple little dabs of paint. Sort of asymmetrical. And then I'm gonna start doing my little mustache shapes. For the most part, I'm doing sort of downward brush strokes. They kind of fan out at the bottom to give it that tree look. And I'm just taking it one section at a time, making our little happy tree. Each layer is getting a little bit thicker than the, or a little bit wider than the last one. And occasionally I'm putting uh, little random branches to make it more asymmetrical. I want to take those branches and go all the way to the very bottom of the paper. I actually don't want to see the tree trunk at the bottom. So lastly, I'm going to add a couple more little trees. I like to make each tree a little bit of a different height, so it kind of seems more natural. Maybe this tree's a little bit further back, so it looks a little shorter. But the same process again. I make the very tippy top of it very thin, very sparse. As I go down, the branches get wider, and I just go ahead and let them run into the other tree. It's okay if we lose some detail. Let's add at least one more tree in here. I usually find sets of three work really well in most compositions. And there you have it. There's our final product. Hopefully this has been good practice for you, getting control over your, um, your paint. The very last thing you should always do is make sure those brushes are nice and clean and that the hairs of the bristles are back in shape. To do that, I just run it through some soapy water and that's all it takes. 
make sure to take a picture of your final product and you're going to be uploading that to Google Classroom.